Okay, today we're going to be talking about something that was actually a viewer request last year. But it's taken me a little bit to get around to this. But today we're going to be talking about Know Your Woods. And essentially the core of this message is going to be breaking down the different popular and pretty preeminent woods that we have here in Alaska and what they're useful for. So let's start out with probably one of the most preeminent woods here and one of my favorite woods of all. And that is going to be birch, paper birch to be specific. Now there are a few sub varieties, but by and large, most of the birch here is paper birch, but birch in general has the same characteristics all around. So what makes birch so great? Well, to start off, it's useful for many, many different tasks. Many things that you need in the woods, you can do with birch. Things such as creating watertight or waterproof baskets or small containers. You can even boil water using rocks to purify water in those containers. You can use those containers for collecting berries and on and on and on. You can even cut strips of paper birch and weave them together to make even larger baskets or whatever you really need. They're great. You can also uh, you can also tie together or weave together uh, very basic shoes, kind of moccasin-like shoes, and that's another use for the paper birch that it provides. In addition to this, you can use and cut up uh, birch to act as shingles because it is waterproof. If you do it right, you can make nice little shingles out of uh, paper birch that will help protect your shelter from water. So or from rain or inclement weather. So many uses to the paper birch or the bark on it. In addition to this, as we all know, birch bark is very flammable and you can use it to start a lot. You can use it to start fires very easily as I have shown many times on this channel. Aside from the bark being extremely useful, the wood itself is another very good thing. The wood it the wood itself actually has the highest level of BTUs, or British Thermal Units, of any of the natural woods you will find here in Alaska, which means that if you are looking for a hot fire or a fire that will last long, you're going to want to look to birch because it is harder to start on fire, but it will produce a hotter fire and a fire that can last longer. So, so last but certainly not least, birch gives us one other great piece of natural resource, and that is chaga, or true tinder fungus. Now this is not on every birch tree, and it's not the easiest to find, but it does solely grow on birch trees. And chaga, like I said, is true tinder fungus, and it can be started with a wide variety of different ignition systems, from ferro rods to Fresnel lenses. This stuff is very easy to start on fire, or I should say to get to ember. It doesn't necessarily catch on fire, but if you do use chaga in conjunction with a properly processed birch bark, you can easily get flames and consequently a fire. So those are the primary things that birch gives us woodsmen and bushcrafters when we look for it. So the next one, and once again, there are two different types of spruce that grow in Alaska. There is black and white spruce. However, the differences between them are not very prominent and the uses for them are nearly identical. There's really not much difference between the two trees, so I'm lumping them together for the sake of conversation. So with black spruce, it is, so it offers some different and unique advantages. First, it offers fat wood, which many of us are familiar with, which is a great kindling, great fire, not necessarily starter, but at the beginning of a fire, that kindling, that initial kindling, if it is fat wood, it is really great. So it offers fat wood. It also, in addition to this, due to the fact that how, of how resinous spruce is as a whole, both white and black, it is one of my favorite building materials for when I'm building a shelter because it doesn't rot. Now, I should technically say it does rot, but because of how the how the sap almost mummifies or preserves the wood itself when it dies, spruce, white and black, tends to be very resistant to rotting. In addition to this, the primary way wood rots 
is by its bark. Its bark invites um, creatures like little insects to come and nest in it and things such as ants to eat it up uh, or wasps eat it up and so they eat the wood out and causes it to rot and go away. Whereas with spruce, when it dies, it tends to shed its bark really well. So it's down just to the core wood. So between the fact that it sheds its bark very well when it dies, and the fact of how the resin within the tree helps preserve the actual tree, means that basically the wood doesn't rot. And if it does, it takes a very long time for it to actually rot. So it's one of my favorite building woods for when I'm building uh, shelters because I know that if I build a shelter out of spruce, and I do know this from experience because I have shelters that are about five years old that I check on every once in a while and they are still going pretty strong. And once again, they're built out of spruce and they haven't uh, deteriorated or broken down. And this is through several winter cycles. So the last part to black and white spruce is of course the boughs. The boughs, not only can they be boiled to make a good tea in the winter for vitamin C, they also can be very good for insulation. You've seen many of my shelters in the past have been predominantly built in, on the inside for insulation and on the outside for insulation just using spruce boughs and they work very well. So that is another great thing that black and white spruce gives to the bushcraft. So the next one is alder. Alder is not as popular or as common a wood, I should say. It's not as popular, but common to find. Uh, and primarily with alder, even though I'm surrounded by a good bit of it today, it's not a particular wood that I find useful more than just fire and shelter building. It's not the greatest for shelter building as we talked about with rot. It will rot out, but it does work pretty well. And in some instances, alder, because it's more of a brush than a tree, it's a very low growing, very arc, growing tree. Uh, it can be very good for shelters and once again I've actually for some shelters incorporated a live alder, alder tree in because it already had the curve that I wanted for the shelter. So it, it works out in some ways but it's not a particularly notable wood. It doesn't have anything that really shines or makes it special. So I just basically say it's good for fire, it's good for shelter, your general purpose tasks. It's not the most amazing wood out there but if you need something, it does exist. So the next one we're gonna talk about is willow. Now willow is one of those woods that is generally, it does not grow very wide or very large, so it's not particularly good for large shelter crafting, uh, but willow does grow small and it is great for small craft. So whether you're trying to build a pot hanger for boiling water over a campfire, or whether you're just looking to make a tri stick or make some notches or if you want to make something like a finger four deadfall trap that's where willow really comes into play it's a softer wood that is hollow or pithy on the core and so it's not particularly strong but it is a very good or very workable wood so it's very easy to whittle on with knives and it won't dull out your knives very fast and once again you can work it very well so willow for me is just pretty much you can burn it if you want though it doesn't burn very well uh, or as well as other woods but it will burn in a fire but primarily i relegate it to crafts or like i said if i'm making traps that's the type of wood that i'm going to be looking for because it's already at that optimal thickness for the most part where i don't have to really you know cut the stick down to diameter or baton it down to diameter it's pretty much already there it's pretty easy to work into whatever I need, especially when carving notches. So the next one we're gonna talk about is aspen. Aspen tends to grow hand in hand with uh, birch, and so you'll see it in the same forests. And aspen's another wood that's similar to alder, though it grows a lot larger and a lot straighter. And it's not a particularly great wood for much. I don't really love it uh, per se, though it does offer two unique advantages, and that is when an aspen dies, and it begins to get to the point where the bark is separating from the actual piece of wood, like the tree itself, there's an inner bark that you can use for two things. You can either take the fibers and make them into a really great bird's nest tinder, which is something I like to do a lot, or you can take those fibers and twist them together in long, str in long strands to make really good or to make some pretty good cordage now it's not going to have the highest tensile strength 
and I do prefer black spruce root over uh, aspen inner bark, but for a impromptu or if you need cordage, you can certainly get it out of aspen. So that is the advantages it has for, it is also a wood that I do like to craft with if I'm going to be crafting with a larger piece of wood because once again, willow doesn't tend to grow very large. So if I'm needing something that's still a reasonably small craft, but that it needs to be a little bit wider than I can find a piece of willow for, I'll use aspen as a substitute because once again, aspen's another soft wood that is very easy to work on, very easy to carve, but yet is pretty rigid. It won't break too easily. So it's another okay wood. It's not my favorite, like I've said, and it doesn't offer a whole lot of advantages aside from the inner bark being a really great tinder and or cordage and the wood itself being able to be worked on for crafts pretty well. So next to aspen, before we get too far, is also cottonwood. Cottonwood is something that we have and it tends to be more preeminent around rivers, but cottonwood essentially at the core of it is the same thing as aspen. It doesn't really have a lot of differences functionally from aspen, so it's basically the same uh, uses as aspen would be. Okay, so the last wood we're going to talk about, and there are a few other woods, there are a few other woods that we have in Alaska, but these are the biggest, is going to be tamarack. And tamarack is one of those woods that sadly is pretty rare nowadays in Alaska. You don't see it too often uh, around a few areas. There might be some hives or condensed areas or areas where the uh, tamarack population is higher than others, but we've actually had a bug go through our ecosystem that's actually wiped out a lot of our tamarack trees. And so tamarack is not as um, prevalent as it once was, but tamarack is in the fir. So tamarack is in the fir family, and what that means is it is one of those evergreen, or I should say, it's one of those, it's one of those evergreen trees that does actually shed its needles. So being in the fir family, it will uh, go through the season it will go through seasons just like any other tree, so like a birch or an aspen or a willow. It will, its needles will go um, golden and then they will fall off in the winter. So that's one of the easiest ways to tell a tamarack is a tamarack. In addition to this, uh, if you're familiar with fir trees as a whole, the uh, needles are quite different from something like a spruce, where spruce trees, the uh, needles are very hard. Uh, tamarack trees, their needles are very soft and they're almost more like a leaf than they are an actual needle. So tamarack has a lot of similar qualities being that it is ultimately in the evergreen type of family. Uh, it has a lot of the qualities of uh, black and white spruce. The differences are though that generally it grows smaller, it grows thinner than most spruce and in addition to this um, it's a lot more flexible, it's a lot more pliable. If you are looking for a wood that you can craft things like toboggans or if you're looking for snowshoes or if you're looking for something that can craft, you can craft snowshoes, toboggans, bows, this is the type of wood you want to go for because it is very flexible and it is good at being flexed into a position and forming to that position as opposed to just cracking or splintering out like a, a birch or an aspen would do. Uh, this tree is very good at flexing. And so if you want to make uh, traditional snowshoes, one of the best woods to use here in Alaska is the tamarack. So this has been my breakdown of some of the most popular woods, albeit some of them aren't as preeminent as others. Uh, you, you will see a lot of birch, a lot of white and black spruce. Those are the highest density woods we have here. But these are the different types of woods you will find in Alaska and some of their general uses. Of course, you can always use woods for something else. And you know, you can always build a shelter with any wood. It doesn't necessarily matter. It's just that some woods are more effective than others especially when you consider some woods will rot a lot faster than other woods will. So you have to kind of take that into mind and that's why I've broken down this list of what woods are out there and what they are good for. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always, God bless and I'm out.